My name is Simon Hinckley. I'm a collection manager for invertebrates here at Melbourne Museum and we're currently in what we call the dry collection where we have all our pinned insects. So the Bogong moth is this little species here and it's not a particularly spectacular moth to look at as we sort of do a comparison between the Hercules moth here which is one of the largest moths in Australia but what they sort of lack I guess in colour they more than make up for in the stories that they can tell us and these amazing uh, migrations that they undertake when they're adults. They emerge as adults in spring in their feeding plain sort of on the inland side of the Great Dividing Range and they'll all head up to the Alps in southeastern Australia and what I find amazing is they've never been there before, there are no moths from previous migrations to show the way and scientists think that the Bogong moth has an internal compass that enables them to detect the Earth's magnetic field. Once they've done that, they'll then pick a landmark because the use of the compass involves energy. So they'll get their bearings, turn that little compass off, pick a mark, something like the Milky Way. So they get their direction and off they go for up to a thousand kilometers. So it's an amazing migration that they undertake. And then when they get there, they arrive in the caves and the crevices up in the Australian Alps. They get in there. In a good year, they completely cover the surfaces of the caves. About five years ago, there was a huge up to about 99.5% crash in their population. So that obviously is a, is a real warning sign. And then at the other end of the feeding scale, the mountain pygmy possum, which survives on these, if the bogong moths aren't arriving in the Alps, then the mountain pygmy possum isn't getting its food. So there's all these sort of implications from that population crash. A number of things have contributed to this population decline. Climate change, in this case, a severe drought, pesticide use in the breeding areas, habitat destruction along the migration route and also the influence of artificial lights. So there are a number of things that we can do to assist the species to recover. We're trying to minimise the use of excessive outdoor lighting. So when these migrate, they fly over somewhere like Canberra or somewhere on the route that's got lots and lots of lights. If it's a bit cloudy and they've lost the Milky Way, they can be distracted. You can also plant nectar-rich native plants in your garden for the moths to sort of stop on on the way and get some nectar and will also benefit other native birds, other native invertebrates and insects. And if you're really keen, you can go to the Melbourne Zoo website, search for Moth Tracker that enables you to record sightings of the bogong moth because the zoo is involved in the conservation of the mountain pygmy possum. The female bogong moth lays up to 2,000 eggs. So the, the good news, I guess, with something like this is, despite the population fall, if we give them some, some assistance, that ability to produce so many eggs means hopefully the population can bounce back quite quickly. I've never met anyone who's terrified of butterflies. I've met many people who are terrified of moths. Butterflies get a lot of good publicity because they're generally pretty, they're visually appealing, they fly during the day. I think moths scare people because they're often associated with the night. Obviously there are some day flying moths but they're mostly nocturnal. There are some very spectacularly coloured moths but often they're, they're quite drab. They might be sort of brown or dark in colour. The other impressive thing about moths is the sheer diversity and you can see the huge difference there between the largest and the smallest but it's not just that, it's the species diversity. So there's about 10,000 described species of moths in Australia and there's probably about another 10,000 waiting to be described, sitting in collections like this or flying around at night waiting to be found. Of the butterflies, there's some hundreds of species in Australia. So moths are much more diverse, in a way much more interesting. I mean, they're both amazing, but yeah, I guess I'm a bit team moth just because they do get a lot of negative publicity.